Hey folks, so I recently picked up um, two of these Power Queen 12 volt 100 amp batteries because I'm working on a sort of off grid, on grid solar hybrid system for my house right now. And so I just happen to have a Blue Eddy EB150 here, so I thought while I'm piecing together parts for this system, I would show you guys how you could use batteries like this to expand the capacity of an e a Blue Eddy EB150-240 um, so you could <clears throat> you know get get more capacity out of this so I'm going to show you that now so the one thing that's kind of odd or different about the EB150 and 240. I, I don't have a 240. I, I assume they're the same thing, but with a bigger capacity. Is the um, if you look closely, the DC input on these particular units start at 16 volts. So you can't you can't charge these with like a standard cigarette lighter. DC cigarette lighter like you can't like you have in a car you have to have higher than 16 volts to, to be able to um, charge one of these things so you know one 12 volt solar panel or one 12 volt battery or it's you know a car cigarette lighter won't be able to charge these particular units okay so I have two basic choices um, that I can use if I want to hook either one or both of these batteries up to this power station. Uh, the first, the first choice, if you wanted to just use one battery, then in order to do that, you would need a 12 to 24 volt step-up converter, which is just like a little silver box with wires on it that you can wire between the battery and this power station and it'll bump it up to 24 volts and then you could just use one battery and the only problem with that is you'd have to wire it up with you know alligator clips and an eight millimeter barrel that would fit on a power station like this the other option i have is to use both batteries and hook them up in a series to bring them up to 24 volts and that's what i've done here you can see i've hooked the positive and the negative terminals of the two batteries together to wire them in a series. So now this is a 24 volt system, so the Blue Eddy should be able to, they should be able to power the Blue Eddy now. So I picked up these sort of cheapo alligator clip to barrel connector clips here on Amazon. Um, they're rated to be able to handle this, but I think if I was be doing this on a regular basis, I would probably pick up something that was more heavy duty. I pick these up because I, I, I use one battery with my smaller power stations over here that will handle 12 volts just fine out of the box. So if you have a power station that can just handle 12 volts, like in the manual, if it says you can hook it up to your car, the DC, you know, cigarette lighter connector in your car, then you should be good to go. You could just use one battery and a pair of alligator clips to barrel connector like this one, and it should work. But with the Blue Eddy, <clears throat> you need higher than 16 volts. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hook up, hook up the positive. Come on, it's hard to do with one hand here. And then hook up the negative. And then, sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. And then take the barrel connector and plug it right into the Blue Eddy. And it should fire right up and there we go. Bringing in 200 and of course, the fan kicks on. You know, you know, roughly 250 watts input. So that's pretty decent. 
So when you hook these up, it doesn't mean that you're automatically expanding the capacity to 460 watt hours. It just means that basically what it means is now you can charge this thing, you know, 250 watts at a time. Um, so which is, would be ideal for someone who maybe you don't have solar and you want to be able to use this power station a lot longer. Or if you do have solar and you just happen to just not have sun for a few days, um, you know, this would be a good way to charge this up, <clears throat> you know, and extend it for a much longer period of time. So the advantage of doing this um, basically is cost. Um, one of these um, lithium iron phosphate batteries is, you know, 2023 money they're about three hundred dollars each which is not bad I mean considering the amount of capacity you get out of these things so you know for six hundred more dollars you can you know greatly ex be able to expand the you know something like the blue eddy EB 150 like this but keep in mind beside besides the six hundred dollars you're gonna need a way to charge these batteries after they've been depleted so you're gonna need something like this, a, you know, a battery charger that can handle this this kind of battery. Um, you know, you could get 150, 60 bucks. So now you're looking at you know 660 dollars. Um, but you know the big disadvantages are, yeah, it's not portable anymore. It's hard to lug all of this around if you want you know that much power. If you want something that's portable, you'd be better, better off buying one of the larger, larger power stations. And another thing um, you would need to consider is you would have to, if you want to know how much capacity is left in these batteries, you're going to need to buy some sort of shunt to attach to these to show you how much, you know, power you have left in them. I mean, these are smart batteries. They have a BMS built into it that'll automatically turn the batteries off after they drain past a certain point but that's I mean that's not ideal you would probably want to be able to see how much power you have left in this so um, just things to consider if you wanted to do something like this I mean it's much cheaper than buying a huge power station you know they're like three three to five thousand dollars and I think you know, this, what you're looking at here in total, you can get a Blue Eddy EB150 for like $700 these days. Both of these batteries for 600 and a power charger for 50, 60 bucks. So, you know, it's something to consider. It's, it's an option. It's not ideal, but it's an option.